have drinking raw milk. Um, I don't on a regular basis. Um, I don't, milk in particular, and most dairy items I would say just don't settle well with me. Um, I'm not a big vegan fan and depart quite a bit from my vegan friends. But the one thing that they've said, which sort of resonates me, with me is that it's kind of awkward that a mammal would drink the breast milk of another mammal. And I was like, oh, yeah, I mean, I guess when you're babies, you drink breast milk, but we're basically drinking breast milk from a cow. Like, if you think of it that way, it's sort of awkward. He was like, why would you do that? And uh, maybe that's why some people have issues, issues with it. Um, from what I know, raw milk is significantly better than homogenized pasteurized milk. Uh, the government would say it's evil and horrible and very risky, but I'm, I don't believe that. I believe there's, it's, it's probably much more beneficial um, from the bacteria standpoint, beneficial bacteria. Um, if I were to drink milk, I would, I, would, I would prefer to drink raw milk, yeah. I'm just not a big dairy guy myself. So when I say earn your carbs, hat tip to my wife for this great slide. Um, I try to consume most of my carbs around my workout window. I use plasma by Biotest and it's one serving is 38 grams of carbs. They're fast acting. They get into your bloodstream and to the muscle quickly. That fuels my, not only fuels my workout, but aids and jump starts my recovery. And so if you're gonna eat more fast acting carbs, tailor it to around the workout window. Like in the past, I would say like that's total blasphemy. If I heard of people eating carbs before they went and trained, I, was, I would be like, you're never gonna get lean. But I've, I use plasma like right up to a week out from my contest and I'm still able to get lean. So uh, there's something to be said for taking those carbs in around the time that you train. There's the, that's the plasma that I use. Um, so let's look here at some dietary suggestions. Avocados are, are super high in monounsaturated fats amongst, they're high in fiber. Um, if you could eat a half an avocado a day, I think that would be fantastic if you're not right now. Uh, eat green olives. My wife is Greek and she actually didn't tell me to put that up there, but we've had olives in our house since I've married her, I think. But I always loved the black ones, like since I was a kid and I stuck them on my finger at Thanksgiving. Um, but green olives, um, I've been eating a lot of those. There was actually a study that just came out and an, I can't vouch for it, but um, it talked about where was that? People ate 12 green olives a day for 30 days. They changed nothing else in their diet. And at the end of those 30 days, they exchanged 2.2 pounds of fat for 2.2 pounds of muscle. So they basically, they didn't gain or lose weight, but they, they, they lost 2.2 pounds of fat and gained 2.2 pounds of muscle. And they didn't change anything else outside of eating 12 green olives a day. So, hey, eat, eat some green olives. Like they're good, in mon they have monosaturated fat too. And it was interesting as well in reading the study that the, the people that conducted it didn't really know why did this happen. Um, they thought it may have had to do with the CLA content, um, which you've heard of CLA being sold as a supplement to, to aid in, in fat loss. But, you know, I'm the type of guy that like if it works, then I don't really care why. Not that I don't ask, but I'm more into the, into the real world stuff. Eat fermented vegetables, sauerkraut and kimchi. I, I'm, I have German background in me, and so sauerkraut maybe in my blood. But I recently started eating kimchi, and it was, it's actually amazing, um, especially when you're dieting because it's pretty flavorful. And you don't need to eat a ton. And when I say uh, sauerkraut and kimchi, I, I guess the reason why I'm saying it, number one, is the beneficial bacteria in it. You know, there's a lot of, a lot of people touting probiotics and 
probiotic supplements, there may be some that are decent that are out there, but in reality, most of the, those beneficial, the beneficial bacteria in a probiotic is probably not gonna get into to your gut. Um, and if you're taking in probiotics and it's not, you don't have prebiotics, which is the fiber for that stuff to pr proliferate and, and grow, it's not really gonna benefit either. So you could spend 40 bucks on a super supplement of probiotics, or you could just go buy kimchi or sauerkraut and probably get more benefit from it. And when I say kimchi, sauerkraut, what have you, fermented vegetables, you gotta go to the refrigerated section. You have to make sure that it's not been pasteurized because at that point you're just eating dead vegetables, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with dead vegetables, but if it's not refrigerated, then it, it isn't gonna have the raw, healthy, growing um, bacteria. And it's actually fairly easy to make your own, even at home, Christina has done that for us, um, just with shredded cabbage. Um, eat more fruits and vegetables. When I diet for a contest, I, tend, I was drinking like two to three shakes a day. And I got to the point where anytime I ate anything, if I drank a protein shake, if I ate vegetables and chicken breast, I'm headed to the bathroom like within 30 minutes, I'm going to the bathroom and it, and it, wasn't, it wasn't fun because I couldn't, I had to make sure I knew where's the bathroom and where's the quickest route. And I, I wasn't sure, like, am I getting colitis? And, you know, I've, you hear of a lot of bodybuilders that have been, eat, you know, competing for a long time, high protein diets, lots of protein shakes, what have you, end up with colon issues. And so I thought maybe that was part of it. I stopped drinking protein shakes, exchanged some of that for, you know, whole food protein. 50% of my problem went away. And then I started saying, okay, I'm gonna to listen to the vegans who say that they can solve everything with vegetables and I'm going to start eating more vegetables and the other 50% of my problem resolved itself by simply eating more fibrous vegetables during the day. So I, that's part of my diet year round now is chop up my celery, my carrots, my peppers, my zucchini, my um, cucumbers, what have you put it in the fridge so it's easily accessible. I take some to work every day. And by three to one ratio, that was just my, that's my own personal thing on fruits and vegetables because people freak out, oh, there's fructose in fruit. Fructose only restores liver glycogen and otherwise gets stored as fat. So don't eat fruit or you're gonna get fat. I don't know about that. Like if all you ate was fruit, you're probably not gonna be obese, but there is something to say with, with fructose. So when I say three to one, I'm just saying, eat three vegetables and then you earn yourself one, one fruit. So do it that way. You wanna eat two fruit, two different fruits a day? Have six vegetables. That's sort of my way of justifying eating more fruit. Make and consume bone broth. This is one thing that I felt like not only has helped my, my digestive system, um, but there's, there's a lot of healthy minerals uh, from, from bone broth. Um, my wife has been doing it with chicken feet as well. Freaks my kids out. It does kind of sound a little bit gross, but uh, hyaluronic acid, which is great for joints, collagen, which is great for joints, um, all that stuff. And when you're dieting, it, for me, it tends to fill me up. Put some lemon salt in it, cut up some vegetables, maybe add chicken if you want. Um, super great thing to be eating on a regular basis. Nuts and seeds, same thing as well. Great source of fiber, fills you up. I know there's some discussion about the anti-nutrients in some nuts um, interfering with the absorption of other uh, nutrients. And you can buy sprouted ones if you're really that geeked out over it. To me, I, I haven't noticed like I'm not absorbing nutrients because I ate some almonds. Um, and then consuming apple cider vinegar. A couple tablespoons, even if it's just at night, has been proven to lower uh, blood sugar levels, uh, fasted blood sugar levels the next day. So it's a great thing to add um, 
to your diet. If you're dieting, it can help you feel, feel like you're fuller and also helps manage uh, blood sugar, which as I had mentioned earlier is important. Train for longevity. Look at Arnold. He's freaking ripped. He turned 70, I think, this year is what I had read. That's actually a bogus picture. I think that's um, Andreas Calding, the guy that makes posing suits. I actually think that's his body. I know, I know it's bogus. I don't know exactly who that is, but Arnold's awesome, but he's not that awesome. Um, but we all want to train, you know, right? Long, long into our, our older age. Um, and so hindsight being 2020 with me, I trained like an idiot in my 20s and am paying for some of that now. And so the younger guys here probably won't listen, just like I didn't listen. But you should listen. Come on. Um, so, so what are some of the ways that have, that have helped me, primarily because I've been forced to learn how to, how to change, and, and that's guard your nervous system. There's a few things that you can do um, to help accomplish that. Train short of failure. That was blasphemy to me. I grew up in the Dorian era. You go to failure or beyond on every set of every exercise, on every workout, or there's something wrong with you. Don't ever stop short of failure. That's, it would be blasphemy. And now I'm saying that, stop short of failure. Now that's not on... <clears throat> That's not on every training day, um, but you, can't, you cannot push to failure beyond every single day without burning out your central nervous system. Utilize lighter weight and explosive training. It, seems, uh, it seemed odd to me when I heard that uh, back when I could squat. You know, why would, I, why would I squat light weight and just try and move it really fast on the, east, uh, on the concentric portion? Um, and it was true. I found out that by doing explosive type movements actually helped recover my central nervous system so that I could train harder on my primary training days. So incorporate explosive movements on your non-primary training days. Cycle your intensity techniques. Back in the day, like, oh, drop sets worked awesome, man. I'm going to do that every day for two months until I break something. Like, don't do the same stuff over and over. If it's working, you know, it, it doesn't mean you should just do it forever. Um, so, and cycle your programming. That means, you know, the volume of your workouts to the exercise selection. Um, the best way to do that, from my perspective, what I learned was hire a trainer. There's me back when I didn't have any hair. So I'm aging in reverse because my hair is sort of growing back. And that's John Meadows. If you don't know who he is, figure it out. He's a genius when it comes to training. And I paid him a dollar. That was kind of a joke back then. But anyways, I did. I met him here. We, we jokingly said, hey, give me a dollar and I'll, I'll help you. He's been fantastic, um, primarily from the standpoint of he sends me the programs, he waves intensity techniques, he waves volume, and it forces, me to, it forces me to do that as well in my training because like I said, in, the, in, the, in my 20s, I was just a knucklehead and it was like, if that works, I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna just keep doing that. And then, and then you know, I would get injured and be like, what happened? So this way, it forces me to, to change things. And so there's a value in hiring a trainer or a coach. And I'll also say though, in regards to that, do your homework on the person because everybody is a trainer and a coach now. Just go on Instagram and it's freaking ridiculous. Like, and a lot of them, like they might even look good. Like they won a board short contest and have a six pack. And so they must know it all, you know, like, I'm super tentative. People ask me all the time, will you train me? And I've not, I've not taken a dime from anybody. I've, I have helped a few people, but I don't feel even confident in my own ability to guide somebody all the way through uh, to a contest. And so do your homework, you know, ask for references and, uh, and, and you know, ask around. Unfortunately, nobody's gonna give you the bad reference, 
the guy that they totally screwed up. But, um, you know, there's no secrets, you know? So, so do your homework, look on the internet, ask around uh, before you hire a coach.